Restoring the interproximal zone with composite resin restorations using conventional hybrid composites has always presented challenges. Improper placement of these viscous composite materials can result in gaps, voids, and deficient marginal seal at the restorative interface. However, by utilizing a modified self-edge technique and a simplified placement of a next-generation flowable, an ideal tooth restorative interface can be achieved. The patient presents with interproximal caries on the mesial aspect of the mandibular left lateral incisor. After radiographic evaluation, a shade comparison and determination was performed prior to the restorative procedure. The dehydration of the tooth from water molecules being depleted from the enamel rods can result in improper shade matching. Once anesthesia had been administered to the patient, the caries was removed with a number two high-speed round burr, which produces rounded line angles. The outline form was as conservative as possible without removing healthy tooth structure unless dictated by caries. A circumferential bevel is placed in enamel using a tapered diamond burr, a DET3 by Brassler USA. An enamel bevel is indicated because it increases the surface area for end-on etching of the enamel rods for an increased etch surface, which results in a stronger enamel to resin bond, which increases the retention of the restoration and reduces marginal leakage and discoloration. The preparation was cleaned with a 2% chlorohexidine solution, Concepsis by Ultradent, rinsed and lightly air dried. A dead metal matrix was placed and secured in the interproximal zone and a selective enamel etch procedure was performed. The prepared and the unprepared enamel was etched with a 37.5% phosphoric acid gel, gel etchant by Kerr, for 15 seconds and rinsed for 5 seconds. A self-etch adhesive Genio Bond by GC America was placed on the enamel and dentin surfaces with an applicator tip for 10 seconds. Air dried for 5 seconds using an ADECT warm air tooth dryer and light cured for 10 seconds. The dead metal matrix was replaced with a mylar plastic strip in the interproximal zone to confine and adapt the composite material to the tooth surface. The mylar strip produces a smooth surface while maintaining the anatomical contour during the polymerization process. A bleach shaded flowable composite material, Genial Universal Flow by GC America, was injected into the preparation and the syringe tip was slowly removed while extruding the material and the mylar strip was firmly adapted to an ideal contour and light cured for 40 seconds using a ramp mode. The material is thixotrophic. This property allows the material to structurally break down so it flows through the syringe tip when the material is stressed and then it restructures and becomes more viscous. Uno and Asmussen suggest that using a slower polymerization causes an improved flow of molecules in the material while decreasing the polymerization shrinkage stress in the restoration. The mylar strip was removed and the interproximal region was inspected for any residual composite resin tags or overhangs. The excess residual resin was removed with a surgical blade, a number 12 BD Bard Parker by BD Medical. The proximal surface were cleaned and smoothed with a loose abrasive diamond polishing paste, which was carried into the interproximal region with finishing strips using the ET composite polishing system by Brassler USA. The proximal surface was inspected for adequate contact with an unwaxed floss prior to removing the dental dam. After the dental dam was removed, a definitive luster and surface reflectivity was accomplished with a goat-haired wheel and diamond polishing paste using an intermittent staccato motion. The following restorative procedure demonstrates the optimal aesthetic results that can be achieved in the interproximal zone through proper adhesive protocol and a simplified application of flowable composite resin. And also notice the radiopacity of genial universal flow is similar to enamel, which makes it easy to evaluate the interface and to identify recurrent caries.